we have six minutes of presentations from four amazing startups. And then our judges are going to weigh in and uh, do a little Q&A. And from there, we'll uh, crown a winner, but tomorrow or the next day, because we've got plenty of these for you. This is just session two. So without any further ado, I'm going to uh, welcome our judges to the stage. The first one is James Park, who is the Fitbit CEO and founder. And you guys can feel free to clap or show any enthusiasm. Just a hint of anything. Hey there, James. Uh, our next guest is Mark Fields, who I thought was ushered over here, but he's just finishing up some negotiations with Google, I think. Is that what I saw? I think it is. We'll talk more about it later. Uh, our next judge is Greg Hu, who's formerly of Apple, and now he is a Nest product manager. Google, so if you want to talk at all. They're sitting right next to each other. And our final judge is Jenny Fielding, who has an incredibly impressive resume. She's the head of digital ventures at BBC. And now she is the managing director of Techstars RGA Accelerator, which focuses on Internet of Things and connected devices. So I'm just going to turn it over to you guys. You have six minutes. This is Calliope Waterworks. And they're going to change the way that we uh, monitor our water consumption. Take it away, guys. We are Calliope, and we do advanced leak detection for households. Did you know that 18% of the water you use in your home is lost to in-house leaks? This is everything from leaking faucets and running toilets to broken sprinkler heads and burst pipes. It, for the average household, that's over 13,000 gallons per year. In places like California, where there's a mandate to reduce per capita water consumption, eliminating these leaks would take us halfway to the target. Plus, these leaks are incredibly destructive. Insurance claims for water damage from in-house leaks are the second biggest category of homeowners' insurance claims. The average claim is $7,500. So this is a big deal. And existing solutions aren't consumer friendly, and they haven't been adopted. They require multiple sensors to be installed all around the house and that need yearly calibration. They're expensive to install and maintain, and they're not integrated with the emerging smart home ecosystem. So that's why we built Calliope. My co-founding team and I have done two previous ventures together, and after our last exit, we decided to focus on this problem. I started out as a mechanical engineer, and the rest of my team comes from consumer electronics, scalable web app, data science, and water policy backgrounds. Our first product is a single device that gives homeowners real-time, detailed information about their water use by category and gives them notifications when unusual use or leaks occur. It gets installed just inside your household water main, and it requires no specific device training. It doesn't require the user to calibrate it. You just start getting information about your use. It costs just $250, and the data service is free for life. So let me show you how it works. Here we have a bathroom sink, and if we turn on the water, water's flowing. Here you can see Calliope. If this were an entire house, this one Calliope would be measuring water use throughout the entire house and categorizing it. This device is sending information about this water flow via Wi-Fi right now. And once we receive that information and process it, we should see a sync event appear in our UI. And there it is. <laughs> there you can see the water flow has been running. It's about 0.7 gallons per minute. It's been running about 17 seconds. And the total amount of water use today has been updated. So what if we didn't turn off the water all the way and we left the tap running like you had a leak? So with a leak this size, you'd waste 10 gallons of water in just one hour. Imagine the damage that would cause if it were running onto your floor instead of down the drain. So for purposes of this demonstration, we've increased the sensitivity of our leak detection so that we can generate a notification quickly. In real life, we'd wait a little bit longer before hassling you with a notification, but we'd still give you enough time to prevent most of that water waste. So while we're waiting for the notification, let's look at Calliope running at a, on a live house. Let's look at my house in California. This is my house, and this is the water we used last Sunday. I have two boys, so you can see I did a lot of laundry. We have four loads of laundry in pink, four showers, two loads of dishes for 172 gallons total. 
Calliope is constantly measuring water use throughout the house and sending that to the cloud at least once per minute. From there, our proprietary machine learning software disaggregates that water use into individual events with a duration and a total volume. Some water outlets are kind of easy to figure out that way, and some, like modern washing machines, form these complex water flow patterns that can easily get mistaken for other things. So when we're not sure, we use secondary characteristics like time of use or other water uses close in time to make better predictions. We also let homeowners correct us in our app and we learn from those corrections. We're constantly improving our accuracy and our body of knowledge about how people use water. And there you can see our leak detection notification appeared. From here, we could dismiss it and go investigate the problem, or we could choose to remotely shut off our water until we could go home and fix it. So now that you can see how Calliope works, you're wondering how are you going to get it installed in your home. We're going to market with regional solar installers as our targeted market for homeowners because if you're caring about, if you're concerned about your water or your energy consumption, you're also probably concerned about water use. Water policy throughout the United States is changing dramatically. Water rates are rising three times faster than any other utility. As a former mayor of the city of Santa Cruz, California, I spent a lot of time worrying about water rates tiered pricing, aging infrastructure, and a diminishing supply. I quickly realized that government could not fix the drought and that conservation really required direct consumer participation. Thanks to Calliope, now property owners can take direct control of their utility bill. They can immediately start saving water by monitoring their use. Additionally, they can prevent damage from leaks and receive insurance discounts of 5 to 10 percent from most major carriers. All this means that in just 18 months, Calliope pays for itself. Every drop does matter. If you're interested in signing up for our beta program, we're starting our public program. We're also looking for people who might be interested in being installers. And if you're looking for a job with a great company and a lot of fun people to work with, check our website at calliopewater.com. And thank you. Big round of applause. <laughs> Saving the world one drop at a time. Judges, what do we think? Any of you can chime in as soon as you're ready. Could you just talk a little bit about your traction so far and where, where you guys are? So we're in private beta currently. We're approaching 20 installs. We're going to market this summer. Uh, we're going through the Highway 1 Accelerator program starting in February. Why not Techstars RGA? <laughs> we didn't know about them. <laughs> um, one other question is just about your distribution model. Um, can you go into, so you're working with installers. How are you reaching those people and what's, what's the plan for scaling? So we're working with solar installers because they're already talking to the consumers that we think are the natural best fit for early adopters for our product. But we're also working with water districts to market our product. Um, we're working specifically initially with the city of Santa Cruz because we have a lot of uh, ties there. And they're helping us bring this to market and market to the, the residents there. How many devices do you need per house? Single device. Just one? Just okay. one. It's installed right inside your, it, not so beyond the city line and into your water main. Got it. So okay. on the consumer side. And then um, you mentioned customers can correct the data if they see anomalies in the data. How, so how do they know what to correct? Like how would they, how would I know that what I'm seeing in the app isn't correct? So it's kind of, um, I've been using it a lot for the last several weeks. And um, even in a household of four, um, most of the day, you can kind of figure out what's been going on, and it becomes kind of obvious. Um, and most, the, the bulk of the volume of your water use is in a few areas. Uh, it's your showers and your toilets and so forth. Um, and a few things are trickier. Washing machines are the tricky bit. One last question. Uh, how, so can you explain a little more how you figure out that there's a leak? Um, yeah, there, there are lots of kinds of leaks. So we, um, we use a number of characteristics to determine leaks. Some are just the water's been running too long and we're not expecting an irrigation cycle because we've learned about irrigation. Um, sometimes it's a flow rate that's gone way too high, so we know that's a burst pipe. And um, sometimes it's a longer persistent trickle. Um, a, uh, a running toilet has a very distinctive flow pattern where it kind of rises and falls. Uh, um, so. So it's a, it's a combination depending on the leak. How have you determined your pricing? What proxies have you used to determine how customers would, would see the value in this? Nest. 
We're nest for water. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just that easy. Yeah. And Fitbit. Yeah. A little yeah. booty kissing on stage. Yeah. Right We're now. not proud. Do you drive a Ford? I, yes, my first car was a Ford Ranger. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Did we hit it all? Except yeah. for Techstar. Yeah. <laughs> Anything yeah. else, Mark? Yeah. Really? What about James? Do you have thoughts? A couple. So just very quickly, how does the, um, the training process work? Is it just you install it, and then there's some period of time where it kind of figures out your house? Or what does that process look like? Yeah, so from the moment we install, we start making predictions based on what we've learned about other households. Mm -hmm. And um, obviously those predictions are, are accurate to a certain extent. And then over time, we're learning. So over sort of the first week, we're improving those okay. predictions. Okay, so do you have like an extensive test lab where you have all these different types of washing machines and plumbing and et cetera? I don't know what, but... Well, we um, have how do you one build saying, that initial but, training set? <laughs> um, no, we're, we're building that out. We do, yeah, we, we have a number of devices and we're building that out. And specifically for on the washing machine issue, okay. um, we're thinking that that's going to be a partnership to try and get that data directly. Okay. And then um, how much of a problem is water damage? Because I noticed like uh, in one of your sites that insurance companies might offer 5 to 10% discounts. It's huge. On insurance? Okay. Huge. It's the second highest, most common cause of in insurance claims in the country. It's, um, for, for your homeowners? For homeowners. For, for homeowners. homeowners. It's okay. Average, oops, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Average claim uh, nationwide is about $5,500, and in the state of California, it's about $7,500. Okay, and these average. leaks occur how? And, like, what is a leak? Your like? hose behind your washing machine is one of the most common ones. They're installed with pretty inexpensive, cheap hosing, and then a couple of years, you're supposed to change them out every year. People don't change them out. Most of us have probably never changed them out, and they um, rupture, and that causes a leak while you're... Okay, and the hose ruptures, and then you see the flow rate change right. when, yes. and it's not expected to change. Right. Yes. Okay, got it. Who do you view as your competitors? For example, uh, security companies provide uh, water detectors, things of that nature. So who do, who do you view as competitors in There are a space. lot of competitors in the commercial space, but there are larger systems, a lot of sensors. Um, the, even the, the home systems that have been developed thus far are really multiple devices around the home as opposed to this single device. And Jenny, I think, has a question as well. Um, so I also live uh, part-time in California. Obviously, we've been in a drought and water's on people's minds. How do you get people um, caring about this in places where there are, isn't a drought or when California recovers, as, as horrible as it sounds, people are selfish and they start forgetting about this. It doesn't become such a pressing issue. So what's your strategy around that? It's, it, although prices are rising in California because of the drought, the reverse is happening on the East Coast. It's an infrastructure issue. The infrastructure is inundated. It's aging. It's been an inexpensive utility for years, so there's, there's an increase throughout the country in pricing. And then additionally, if you think about the application on the East Coast, your pipes are freezing. You've got a, a vacation home in the mountains. There's a lot of applications that are different from what you think about for drought in California or in the Western region, but still uh, the device would work there as well. That's all where right. the insurance discounts are, are really powerful. All right, that's all for uh, Calliope. Big round of applause. And we've got a little bit of time that it's going to take to uh, get this sink off of my stage. So I figured I would talk with you guys a little bit more about your thoughts on them. What do you think, like, Jenny, what's your biggest concern about a company like this? What do you think is the biggest challenge for them? Um, I mean, really, my, my last question, I think that having them position it more as less about com conservation and um, you know more about monitoring might be better. It seemed like at the beginning it was really about you know saving water um, but if there are other applications making it broad um, you know I think would be I mean if I'm not mistaken we're running out of fresh water on the earth right um, yeah but it's not on people's minds until it becomes a critical issue right, right unfortunately right. so on, on the uh, in the south I believe they've they're having major floods right so people there may not be thinking in terms of water conservations and so I think yeah. maybe if there's a way to position this a little bit um, you know around water monitoring and you know making sure levels are, are right so I would say that that would be um, something to think about more on the positioning side and then how do you scale into other verticals right so with hardware some of these areas tend to be siloed and pretty niche and um, if you want to build a big business like what are some of the other verticals that once they've developed this um, these applications can scale into and Greg I mean nest you 
there's a lot of parallels that we can see here. What are your thoughts on Calliope? I think it's good. I think it's, um, I think it's hard to do the algorithms right and, and really present the data in a meaningful way. Um, you know, I think in a way that makes sense to customers. And, you know, I think the learning part of it's going to be really tricky, like really understanding that the flow's changed and there's a leak. Um, you know, I mean, I know in my house, you know, the flow of different sinks and toilets is different based on the manufacturer and some are lower than others. And so, you know, it'd be interesting to see actually, you know, playing with their product and seeing how accurate it is kind of across the home. Um, you know, I think leak detection is a big problem. I know my, my water heater actually just burst a couple weeks ago. So, um, you know, it's a great problem to solve. I think it's just a really hard problem to solve, so. Yeah, she was talking a little bit earlier about washing machines and the hoses in the back. I remember the funniest, well, funniest for me and worst weekend for my dad was when my mom left town with my dad and me and the kids or whatever. And he not only let my sister cut off her own hair right before she was supposed to be a flower girl, but he also flooded the bottom floor of our house. My, dad, my mom came home and was like, what is wrong with you? What happened while I was gone? Mark, what about you? What do you think? Well, I think it's a really interesting uh, home smart device. I... I I keep going around in my mind, you kind of just mentioned, what problem are they trying to solve? Are they trying to solve, gee, we're going to have a leak at some point and, you know, damage? Or are they trying to solve the water efficiency problem? And, and then what do you do if it's water efficiency? You know, you look at it and you tell, what do you tell your kids? You know, don't take a shower tonight. You're going to have to take it, you know, on Thursday instead of Wednesday. So in, in my own mind, in terms of approaching from a marketing and a customer standpoint, what is the problem they really want to solve? And then what's the ease of being able to utilize that? I mean, I'm a, ne I'm a Nest customer and it, you know, it's, it's pretty, pretty self-evident to me. I'm, I'm just trying to understand from the presentation as a customer, what would appeal to me. I mean, if they can promise to, I mean, Nest makes a promise that through efficiency with understanding the way that your home is changing, you will save money, right? There's a promise built into the product the same promise is built into this that might be more compelling right? yeah could be could be but with nest you can actually control it at any time you want right to be able to turn things on and off so that's the thing i've been thinking about cool um if you have closing thoughts we can not too many i think um a lot of the success i think is going to be predicated you know devils in the details about how well the product works um i think if the training or learning doesn't work very well and you get a lot of false positives um i think it'd be very frustrating absolutely to consumers so cool yeah